alert from the Potter Blog site, October 28, 2014. Centers for Disease Control has changed the case definition of Ebola virus disease uh, to reflect some things that have happened with uh, Dr. Spencer in New York. Now, uh, we have uh, direct links to these documents on our webpage. Uh, here's our quick reading of it. Uh, in short, CDC has greatly increased the at-risk Ebola category to include the following. Direct contact, handshake with an Ebola victim 21 days prior to symptom onset. Two, airborne contact, even brief proximity, such as being in the same room for a brief period of time with an Ebola victim after their symptom onset. Now, they've also changed, uh, removed fever and made the uh, definitions much more subjective so that any person who meets these two above definitions and in the subject eyes of an examiner has any signs of concern, such as elevated body temperature, 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit, is now defined as a person under investigation for Ebola, and as such, that person is subject to forceful quarantine. <coughs> So two key things is, is they're now basically admitting to uh, the ability that you can get Ebola prior to symptom onset from somebody and that you can get uh, Ebola via airborne contact after symptom onset. And uh, it's not even three meters anymore. It's being in the same room. So you may ask, why is being in the same room so important? Well, people who follow the Potter Blog site already know the answer to that, but uh, we'll give it to you here in a split second. If a person, worst case, if a person with Ebola aerosolizes one drop of Ebola-infected blood, say through a sneeze or a cough, worst case, that one drop of aerosolized blood can kill or infect half a million people. And if you take that down to what that means in terms of a room size, it comes down to this. If that person, worst case, aerosolizes one drop of blood in a room that's 1,104 square feet, then stepping into, that room, stepping into that room and drawing just one breath and leaving is enough to infect you with Ebola. That's why the room issue is so important. So, it, you know, it, basically they've gone in a roundabout way admitting to things we've already told you. And that is, is that you can get it before symptom onset and you can catch it through the air and uh, the airborne aspect becomes much more troubling uh, during the winter. The U.S. Army uh, suspects that uh, Ebola will spread like flu-like in the winter, just like flu has a season where it spreads via airborne route and a season where it doesn't. Ebola probably has the same. Now the case definition change came down yesterday and uh, basically what they've done is is they've made it so that a person who has both consistent signs or symptoms and risk factors that follows. They've added the signs thing and they've made it so that elevated body temperature or subjective fever symptoms including headache and they've added fatigue. This used to say this used to say at least on October 25th you had to have a specific fever of 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit and you had to be exposed to a known patient who that was a confirmed case and you had to be exposed through direct contact blood or other bodily fluids that was on October 25th as of Octo October 27th it's now only elevated body temperature and somebody else can say that you know or subjective fever meaning like I feel like I have a fever but uh, you know the thermometer only shows 98.7 all this comes out of Dr. Spencer because he was showing fatigue days before he showed any fever. Now they've also changed the epidemiological risk and that's where we came up with the two things we, dis we discussed earlier. So let's go to the current epidemiological risk factors and we'll go to the ones they've added here. And it says having brief direct contact, shaking hands, while not wearing appropriate PPE with a person with, with Ebola while the person was only in the early stage of the disease. Now notice they didn't say symptomatic. They said in the early stage of the disease. So basically what that means is, is if the person, as soon as the person develops symptoms, any person who had contact, direct contact with that person 21 days prior, 
is at risk and may be a probable case if they feel like they have fever or somebody else thinks they're showing signs of fever. And then the other one they've added is the brief proximity, such as being in the room for the same period of time with a person with Ebola while the person was symptomatic. Now they are, they're only going to carry it that deep. What they've done is they've also eliminated contact with an asymptomatic person who had contact with a person with Ebola. So we're going to explain that what that means in terms of Dr. Spencer in New York. Here's a timeline from ABC News and we're going to just zoom in a little bit. Okay, the, the key thing is is that uh, on Tuesday, October 21st, Dr. Spencer noticed he's feeling more tired than usual. So that's on October 21st. So anybody who shook Dr. Spencer's hand or touched him since October 1st is now considered a possible case by the CDC and is eligible for quarantine. That includes uh, anybody who was on the flight with him, uh, people he had in contact with when he left uh, Guinea, uh, when he returned to Brussels and checked into hotel room, and when he arrived in New York on September 17th. So anybody who touched him before October 21st is at risk and could be set down, uh, could be put under quarantine. Now, anybody who was with Dr. Spencer and shared the same room with him, even for a brief moment, October 21st onward, basically if you breathe the same air as he did, that'd be anybody who rode the subway on Tuesday or Wednesday or uh, even Thursday when he went, uh, when he started to feel feverish. It said he visited Manhattan's Highline Walkway and the Blue Bottle Coffee stand along the way. So anybody there who was with him inhaling the same air because now he's considered symptomatic because he's feeling fatigued. Under the old definition these people would not be considered exposed because prior to this you would not he would not have been considered symptomatic until he had the fever. Now he's considered symptomatic. So on Wednesday he takes a three mile jog along Manhattan's Riverside Park he takes the A, L, and L subway trains to the gutter bowling alley in Brooklyn, and he takes the car service back home. So based on the CDC's new guidelines, anybody who's on that subway is now basically subject to quarantine and is a, an exposure risk for Ebola. Same thing with the people who were in the bowling alley with him. And definitely would think the same thing as the person who drove the car. Then on Thursday, he says that he feels feverish after 10 a.m. and uh, they come get him. At some point in here too, he also is having uh, uh, diarrhea and obviously would use the uh, the restroom. Well, something else that's just come out is that the uh, uh, the United States Army Defense Threat Reduction Agency is also concerned that uh, that this will persistently infect the uh, sewer systems. They say that uh, they specifically list that uh, Ebola is aerostable in dark uh, closed systems like sewer systems. It's also stable in the water, basically in sewer systems, and they're urgently trying to find out if it's stable in the biofilms, the basically the slime and the sludge that's in a sewer system. So it's very possible he's already contaminated the sewer system, and that also puts rats and anybody who's who is dealing in with the sewer system at risk. Now let's look at the, I'll give you here the pre-case definition. Now this was as the uh, web page here looked on October 25th. And you can see that it doesn't say, it says a person has both consistent symptoms and risk factors. No longer says signs. Lists a specific temperature. It's no longer subjective. If you're, if you're not 101.5 degrees or above, basically they can't quarantine you. All that's gone away now. And again, the uh, risk factors were such that you had to have contact with somebody who was a confirmed EVD case. And a confirmed EVD case was uh, somebody who's had basically a test and tested positive. All that's gone now. And it, you know, they should have had this from day one. And of course, that doesn't mean all these people are going to get it, but it means that they're now prepared to uh, 
to deal and quarantine anybody they have to. Be prepared.